This is a fun game for me. Everybody's talking about Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. Oh, well, this is the matchup that everybody's been waiting to see. I learned a lot this game. A lot about how technically sound Michael was. Because it's one thing in watching him play, and then it's another thing in playing against him. He's now in a postgraduate course. Yeah, boy. Accelerated learning. His technique was flawless. I wanted to make sure my technique was just as flawless. Been down to half court, and he wanted to know how, when I turn around on my jump shot, how to feel the defense. I told him you should feel the defense with your legs. Once you feel the defense with your legs, you can take advantage of that. That was very inspiring for me. I remember talking to Michael about his motivation every night. And he used to say that maybe there was somebody in the stands that never had a chance to see me play for the first time. And I want to make sure that they go home and they see the best of me. I remember being a kid and going to games, expecting to see the players play. It never occurred to me at the time that they might be tired, they might be sore, they might be sick. It never occurred to me. I just wanted to see them do what they do. I think about that. It doesn't matter if I'm sick. You know, it doesn't matter if I have a sprained ankle. The kid that's sitting in there might be the next me sitting up there, watching and trying to get inspiration from that. I need to go out there and play. Oh, that's great defense there by Kobe. Oh, we're talking about at 36 years old, 19th season in the league, going against the best player on the planet. And basketball never felt like work to me. And once I came to the NBA and I looked around, I saw other guys that weren't working as much as I was, then I started to understand that, you know, how I went about it is hard work. Mm -hmm. To me, it was just, I just love what I do, so I want to do it as much as possible. Passion. And people have to be lucky to find passion in life. Yeah, you do, you do. And if you're really lucky, you find that at an early age. I am a 17-year-old kid, but at the same time, you have to understand when to separate business from pleasure. Uh, I don't think you're, you can mix the two, because if you mix the two, and that's when you start to fall. You know, now it's time to go in there, and it's time to do some work. Wow, did you see the move by the kid? That's cool. Did you see the finish by the kid? On the West Coast, L.A. Showtime, doing our thing. Up high, down hard, Kobe Bryant. Oh! Back down, fade away. Kobe down the middle, in the air, shows up a oh, he made it. Crossover. Playground moves, shades going behind your leg like that. Here comes Bryant. Oh, mesmerizing! 360 turn in the air and spin it in. Magnificent. Did you set goals when you started in the NBA? Did you have goals at that point? Certain yeah, things was, that you wanted to do? Yeah, it was really simple for me at the time, which is win as many championships as possible. That, that was, that was it. Growing up, I understood that to be the standard. Much Magic went five. The Lakers are the world champions. I watched Michael win six. Oh my God, that was beautiful. What a finish. People talk about your relationship with Michael Jordan. Let me straighten this out first. The time at the forum or wherever that was, Phil had Michael come to the game and said to the table, you remember that? I read somewhere where it said that you didn't challenge him or he didn't challenge you. It didn't happen. It did happen because I was sitting right there at the table, right at the table. So Phil asked Michael if he wasn't doing anything, just come by practice, maybe they want to play. Maybe we can find out what you got. And then you said back, no, maybe I'll find out what you got. Right. And then he said back, well, you can't guard me. And then you said, you can't guard me. Right. You, how old were you? 21. <laughs> you were 21 years old. It was a silent moment. And then when we walked out, when we walked down the hall, Mike goes, I love that dude, man. He's a warrior. Because you did not step back. It's like, well, maybe we'll see. Let's play. Right. When we can play tomorrow, right. <laughs> I got shoes. Let's battle all day long. Oh, I know you ain't talking. Oh, you ain't talking. Hey, you only got three now. I got six. How do I get that foul? You only got three now. 
I grew up watching him and I grew up having that same type of edge and competitiveness. I know where you're going. You gotta get up quick. If you knew where I was going, why you go for the face? Mike, after you face the ball, where else are you going? You left go? your feet. Yeah, but where else are you gonna go? In the game I go for you. I spun all the way around. I go for these ribs right here. Michael and I both know there's certain players that we can intimidate. Certain players are afraid. Four, three, two, that's all right. I shoot him better when the clock going down. But every now and then, you run into a player that has the same DNA that you do, has the same competitive spirit that you do, and you quickly realize that the bullying and the trash talking is not going to work with this person. I can guard you one on one. It's, you get what? It's nothing. Oh, now I know you lost your mind. Did you score? Yeah. What makes you think that? That I can score on you? Yeah. No, I'm pretty confident I can score. Because right. you don't talk yourself into getting 50 dropped on it. Have you run into anybody playing today, young, younger players, that have that same fire, that same passion that you have for the game? Westbrook plays me. Oh, what a vicious slam! He played me like I did. With an aggression. much the way I play.